Your assignment to the B-17 airplane means you are no longer just a pilot. You are now an airplane commander, charged with all the duties and responsibilities of a command post. You are now flying a 10-man weapon system. It is your airplane and your crew. You are responsible for the safety and efficiency of the crew at all times. Not just when you are flying or fighting, but when you are full 24 hours every day when you are in command. The crew is made up of specialists. Each man, whether he is a navigator, bombardier, engineer, radio operator, or one of the gunners, is an expert in his line. But how well he does his job, how efficiently he plays his part of a member of your combat team, will depend to a great extent on how well you play your own part as airplane commander. Accurate and effective bombing is the ultimate purpose of your entire airplane and crew. Every other function is preparatory in hitting and destroying the target. That is your bombardier's job. The success and failure of the mission depends upon what he accomplishes in his short interval of the bombing run. When the bombardier takes over the airplane for the run of the target, he is in absolute command. He will tell you what he wants done until he tells you bombs away, his word is law. The bombardier should be familiar with the duties of all members of the crew should he be able to assist the navigator in case the navigator becomes incapacitated. The navigator's job is to direct your flight from departure to destination in return. He must know the exact position of the airplane at all times. The exact position of the airplane must be known not within 5 miles, but within 1 quarter of a mile. Instrument calibration is an important duty of the navigator. All navigation depends directly upon the accuracy of his instruments. Correct calibration requires close cooperation and extremely careful flying by the pilot. Instruments to be calibrated include the altimeter, auto compasses, airspeed indicators, alignment, the astro compass, astrograph, drift meter, and the check of the navigator's sextant and watch. The cool pilot is the executive officer, your chief assistant, understudy, and your right hand man. He must be familiar enough with every one of your studies, both as a pilot and as an airplane commander, to be able to take over and act as your place at any time. He is also the engineering officer aboard the airplane and maintains a complete log of performance data. Always remember that the co-pilot is a fully trained, rated pilot just like yourself. He is subordinate to you only by virtue of your position as the airplane commander. The B-17 is a lot of airplane, more airplane than one anyone pilot can handle over a long period of time. Therefore, if you've been provided with a second pilot who share the duties of flight operation, bear in mind that the pilot is the right-hand seat of the airplane is preparing himself for airplane commander's post too. Will have every a chance to develop his ability to profit from your experience. Size up the man who will be your engineer. This man is supposed to know about the airplane and fly it than any other crew member. He must work closely with the co-pilot, checking engine operation, fuel consumption, and the operation of all equipment. He must be able to work with the bombardier and know how to cook, rock, and load bomb rocks. It is up to you, the airplane commander, to see that he is familiar with these duties and if he is con hazy concerning them to have the bombardier give him special help and instruction. He must be thoroughly familiar with the armament equipment, know how to strip, clean, and assemble guns. He should have a general knowledge of radio equipment, and must be able to assist in tuning transmitters and receivers. There is a lot of radio equipment in today's B-17s. Radio is a subject that cannot be learned in a day. It cannot be mastered in six weeks, but sufficient knowledge can be imparted to the radio man during his period of training in the United States if he is willing to study. Training in the various parts of the heavy bombardier program is designed to fit each member of the crew for handling his jobs. The radio operator will be required to render position reports every 30 minutes, assist the navigator in fixing tasks, and keeping the liaison and the command post properly tuned and in good working order. Understand from an operational point of view the navigation equipment in the airplane. In addition to being a radio operator, the radio man is also a gunner. During periods of combat, he will be required to leave his watch at the radio and take up his guns. He is often required to learn photography. The B-17 is the most effective gun platform, but for its effectiveness it can either be applied or defeated by the way of the gunners of your crew positions performed in their action. They should be experts in the aircraft identification. They should know how to maintain the guns, how to clear jams and stoppages, and how to harmonize the sights with the guns. While participating in training fights, the gunners should be operating their turrets constantly, tracking for flexible guns even if they're not actually fired as practical. Other airplanes flying in low vicinity offer excellent targeting practice. 
as do automobiles, houses, and other ground objects during flow altitude lights. Each gunner should fire the guns at each station to familiarize himself with another man's position to ensure knowledge of operation in the event of an emergency.